They say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Baiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet. Gonna educate your palate right here in Farmer's Kitchen. In town, Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen brought to you by... Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Rose Farm Supply. Family farming and commitment to our customers since 1982. Housewarmings, the outdoor living and fireplace experts. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen, the cold winter edition. We aren't going outside much on purpose. I got a fire going right over there and I'm staying in today. But you know what? We've got a fun show for you. Brand new segments. And we're going to start off with appetizers. Now, I love my fruit and I love my vegetables. And most people who come into our house, that's what they're going to get for an appetizer. But my wife does something very interesting. She makes this dip for fruit. Now it has yogurt and cream cheese and all kinds of wonderful stuff in it. So you have kids that don't necessarily like the fruit. You can dip this into this magic fruit dip and it makes it absolutely wonderful. So let's go shopping and get the ingredients for Nikki's special wonderful fruit dip. A yum. Now what are you making tonight for our fruit, for our snack? It's a Greek fruit yogurt dip. And it's easy. Yeah, it's very easy. And it's tasty. Right. So let's go ahead and get us some organic snacks for that. Well, one of the ingredients is whipped cream. Well, you could buy, I guess, but we're going to actually whip our cream. Ready? Yep. And just like that, yeah. whipped cream. Let's add about a, let's add one tablespoon and taste it and see what we think. Okay. How's All that right. taste? I like to taste it. <laughs> that's good. Now that's real whipped cream. Now we're gonna add a Ooh. whole container of cream cheese. <laughs> this is good for us. Dang. Now, obviously. If you got little kids that just will not eat fruit, you may entice them with this. Now I eat fruit for the most part without anything, but every now and then, just for a little side, for a little snack, or d'oeuvre. Now what's this? This is Greek yogurt. We're gonna put about the same amount as, as our cream cheese. And I'm gonna add some vanilla. A little Jesus bit of vanilla. vanilla. And that's it. Now we've had lots, lots of folks over and make little snack trays. And we've never had anybody that didn't absolutely love this. Now 
No, it's supposed to sit for about an hour in the fridge. But it's we're not, not going to do that. Yeah, you saw what I did earlier. You talk about whipped cream, and you don't want all those propellants or anything in that can. That's whipped cream. Buy your cream, whip it, put a little sugar in it, and you got the real thing. Fruit dip. Fruit dip. Hmm. That's wonderful. This is our fruit from Good Foods. Oh my. Absolutely wonderful. It's a good snack while we're waiting on our other snack. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm. Try an apple. Hey, I'm gonna tell you one more time, real quick, about our deal coming up. Tell us about your favorite restaurant. Go to our Facebook page, make a post, tell us why we should be at your restaurant. If we do, we have dinner with you there. We video it. And we bring a little package of Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen items. We'll have some fun. Mm. All right, now, this next dish right here is so simple. It doesn't take any dishes. I'm fascinated by my new toy. You've seen it before, you're gonna see it again. A lot of times here lately when I'm cooking meat, whether it's on the big green egg or in the oven or on the stove top, I'm using a big old hunk of pink Himalayan salt. Let's try some steaks on it. Let's talk about one of my favorite things in the world. It was steak. Steak's amazing. Now we've already got the we've already got your um, rock heated up in the oven. What do you do? The procedure is the same for everything. Heat it up, good and hot, 400 to 500 degrees. Put some oil on there and cook till it's done. That's it. Now I like it rare. Yeah, when I cook a, a rare steak, most people don't go all the way rare, medium rare, but when you want the rare, I like it good and hot. Just 500 degrees and above. And you'll know, because when you drop that down, yeah, it really sizzles hard. And so you're just gonna cook that you know, first layer and then flip it over. So you're talking a minute each side tops. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. So now that we're at 400 and some, and the rock's heated up, you're just, just that simple. Just that simple, put the oil on. Gotcha. The heat and the oil, that's the magic ingredient. The oil is what controls the salt, so there's not too much salt content in the food. And so put your layer of oil on there. And, and as, as you get that oil in, as it saturates, you can use less and less oil. But in the beginning, very liberal. And so you throw your oil on, drop your steak, and when you're feeling good about it, flip it over, and it's perfect. You wanna do it? Absolutely. I'm not scared. Man. Let's go. There's your setup, right there. Okay, we've already put a little bit of oil on there, so it's going to be just great. And all you do, you tell it's good and hot. We're running about 500 degrees there. Throw it on. Now you can see down here below, we've got a drip pan with water in it. That's so any juices coming down, they're going to hit water, not be smoky, no mess, no fuss. And then we'll just give that a few minutes, mm -hmm. and we'll be ready. I know, obviously. You know, people see this thing and they're, they're going to think, okay, that's I can only use this outside. No, 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 no. Use it on the top, use it in the oven. We've used it on the grill. It's fantastic because you get not only those flavors, but the smokiness as well. But my goodness, I'm looking for like, where did, where did you sneak the flavor in? But it, it's, it's, it's coming out of here. Hey, the flavor is in the food. It's always there. And that's yeah, the magic of salt. Salt pops the flavors of the food itself. It brings those natural flavors up, enhances them, and blows them up. All right, now we got our steak going in there, and, and I really like my rare, so how long would you say? Um, if you really like it rare, about a minute or so on each side. Very fast. We're already at a minute. Yeah. <laughs> you think we got to switch it? Let's flip it. Let's flip it. And especially in the oven, your heat all around. It's going to cook really fast. Oh, wow. All right, we'll give it another minute there. All right. And we'll be ready. Now, while we're doing that, let's talk about a couple things. People are going to ask some questions, okay. First of all, how long does this thing last? You're gonna, you know, two weeks and it's gonna melt down to nothing, right? No, it's permanent. Wait a minute, let's back up. Permanent. Permanent. It's a permanent lifetime product. Think of it like your cast iron skillet. And it's exactly like that because if you treat it like the cast iron skillet, never wash it. That's the most important thing in a cast iron skillet. Use plenty of oil on it and the oil seasons the skillet, the oil seasons the block. And cook hot. Whenever you're cooking with a cast iron skillet, it likes to be hot. First thing you do when you're gonna cook on a cast iron skillet is preheat it so you get the sizzle when you drop the meat down and nothing will stick to it. It's the exact same thing with the salt rock. Never wash it, lots of oil, cook hot. How do you store it? When you, when you get done with it, what do you do with it? 
When you're done with it, you leave it in your grill, or you can leave it in your oven, or you can leave it on stovetop. You, you just leave it where you cook. It's salt. Salt is a food preservative, so it's always safe, it's always sanitized, and it's always ready to go. Wow, so one of these, properly maintained, will last you a lifetime. Yes. Unbelievable. You can put it in your will. And we know that there are minerals that our body needs, and this is all natural. It comes out, like you say, the part of the mountain that there's nothing up there. There's right. no drainage or anything coming off that's, that, that can harm you. It's the real deal. Well, you know what? Let's check that steak because I know we're getting close. Steak's ready now. I know you like medium, or I'm sorry, you like rare, and we're probably closer to medium rare, but you're going to see why that's great. You can tell just by the way it cuts, there's a different oh, texture man. to the thing. Let's get that bite out of there. Let's see how we did it. You gotta try this. Nikki's standing over here. Nikki wants to try it. Something we said off camera is a lot of people don't realize that the Pope is cooked, they cook on one of these. Yeah, that's an interesting fact. It's not the Himalayan salt, but it's a source near the Vatican. And their salt's pure white, but it's just like marble and granite. That's just a color variation from the minerals that, that are contained. But by Vatican law for the last 700 years, they cook the Pope's food on a salt rock. And he's the only one allowed to eat food cooked on a salt rock from the Vatican. Wow. And you can see why. Now, you know what? I had this thought. You know, Nick and I like to camp, but you're limited when you're camping. You know, your food's usually out of a can or something gross. I started thinking, we get one of my little butane burners and this thing, and we can stop by any store and be gourmet cooking in the middle of nowhere with just this right here. Absolutely. You can put it on the campfire. All right, well, here we are, right here in the middle of the kitchen. Let's turn this guy over. Here we go. Got the tongs right here. Got the tongs. Oh, it's getting a little brown. No, no, you know me, I'm a 125 guy. But somebody behind the camera somewhere wants they're a little, a little more done. So the mystery of this thing, I still don't get it. I still don't get how all that. Now you said you said the salt eventually, um, if you want more salt flavor um, over time to just basically cook at lower temperatures or? The block will season and saturate with the oils and then the salt shuts down. You won't get the salt, but it's that tenderizing effect, that juicy effect. Mm -hmm. At that point, if you want to use seasoning lightly on it uh, with some salt, you can do that or you can slow down on the oil or you can lower the temperature a little bit. Any of those things will bring the salt flavor back to you. That brings this to my attention. Yeah. Now, if you want this along with this product, You've got this little deal right here where it's the same product in here, which you can just dash a little bit on, if you can't get enough salt. Yeah, this is my little portable salt shaker. This is so you can have at any restaurant, anytime, anywhere, your healthy pink Himalayan salt. And so you just, just give it a little dab there, wow. and you have plenty of salt. Well, that really polarizes it. You know what, for a one-armed guy who's always, you know, you got the twist stop, look at here. Oh, very much. I like it's great that great for red lot. pepper flakes, too. Really? So it just pulverizes it? Yeah. Man, I'm, I'm like almost speechless here, except somebody's steak's getting too done. Let's cut that up and see what that looks cut like. Cut in there, and you can cut right on it. You're never, ever going to hurt it. Now, what you're going to see is, see, now that's, it's not even really medium rare yet, but you can see it's past what you normally like. I probably had to check and that. And so, just have, just as we go it. along here, and it gets more and more done, you can see the effect. You're still going to love the texture of that. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Want Now, I always like to pair my steak with a good wine, and I have been trying to find a Kentucky wine that uses Kentucky grapes. I finally found one. It's called Chrisman Mill, and it's in Jessamine County. We want to take a visit and take a look around, and we found some good Kentucky wine. Chris Nelson, Chrisman Mill Wine. Correct. I tell you what, I've, I've had it, I've tried it. It's good stuff. Thank you. One of the things that I find very appealing is most places, their grapes come from somewhere else. 
some other state. For the most part, that doesn't happen here as far as grapes are concerned. Tell us about, tell us about what you do here in Jessamine County. Yeah, absolutely. That's been our commitment from the very beginning is to make wines from Kentucky grapes. When Denise and I first moved here, we traveled around the state and around the states around us to look at what wineries were doing. And what we found was the best wines were made from grapes grown right there near them. So that's been our commitment from the beginning. The tobacco settlement uh, funds early on helped a lot of our growers get established and we made a commitment to them to buy their grapes. Uh, and we really, it's a gentleman agreement. We don't have contracts, we just buy year to year and we're lucky to have some very good people to bring in some high quality grapes from around mostly central Kentucky, but also a little west and a little east. I think the thing here is that's really nice is we have a warm enough summer to ripen most of the grape varieties that we like to work with. We have a variety of soils, so there's, and. That helps me as a winemaker too. I get slightly different variations on flavor uh, from different terroir, it's the French word they use for the difference in soil and climate. So uh, this really is an ideal location because of the soils, uh, because of the fact we have a season long enough to ripen most of the fruit. And uh, we have a very, as you know, a very agrarian uh, population here who is committed to farming and, and eking out a living or an existence with uh, a crop and grapes are something that takes a lot of work and a lot of dedication and commitment but we found we have a lot of committed folks who, who are really passionate about growing good grapes. Now this is not something you could just say hey I want to I want to make some wine. This is this is a very 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 involved process that you've been working on since the 80s correct? That's right I started in college and uh, my background's in, in science and there's a lot of science to winemaking uh, there's a lot of art too though and you have to bring in both of those talents uh, to make really good wine. Um, but it all gets really back to, to getting the best fruit you can get uh, and I knew that from my early winemaking days and that's something I figured out early on is if you don't start off with a good starting uh, product you know you're not going to make a good finished uh, value added product in wine. Now let's talk about where we're standing right now. This is in Jessamine County and tell us what you might expect to see or what you can find in this particular place in Jessamine County. Well, what can you do here? I mean, I, I see a room over here. Looks like you sit down and have some chat. We do, yeah. We have a small restaurant. Uh, we do our Tuscan night dinners. We do weddings here. But I think what, uh, what we found early on about Jessamine County, and really was quite by accident when we decided to buy our piece of property here in this county, we found out pretty quickly that there was a vineyard established here in 1799 by a Swiss-French gentleman from Vivay, Switzerland named Jean-Jacques Dufour. And he struggled for a while, uh, and then eventually the family moved up to southern Indiana, a little town there that the locals called Vivi, but it's literally named after Vive, Switzerland, where they all came right from. Right here. Yeah, this and he was seven grapes. miles south of here. Uh, wow. And actually a gentleman now has that property and has brought it back with the, some of the original vines there on the property, uh, original vine varieties. He's got them growing again there and making wine. Yeah, that wow. first vineyard was the name of the vineyard. And uh, Tom Bell's the gentleman's name. He's got first vineyard now back up and running. Uh, down off Sugar Creek Pike, well, right here in Jessamine County. Now, where do you make your wine, here? It's right next door here. We have a production facility. We actually started with that first, and so we built this adjoining tasting room next to the production facility, and we've kind of added that direction with our event facilities as well. Wow. So this is your, again, your tasting room, which we're, we're back into. And what happens when somebody comes up to visit your place here? Well, uh, increasingly people know what a tasting room is about, but it's interesting. Some people walk in and, and we really have to kind of say, here, have you been to a tasting before? Have you been to us before? But what we do is basically this is a chance for them to taste small amounts of uh, wine and see if they find something that they really like. Um, and a lot of times they'll stay and buy a glass or a bottle and we do uh, uh, heavy hors d'oeuvres, tapas, and uh, they'll take those uh, and have a place in the vineyard or out in the uh, Tuscan room or a table somewhere out in the vineyard and they, they enjoy the food and the wine together which is the, the thing that you and I are all about. Now can we have a little tour maybe walk around and see some stuff? Yeah absolutely, I'd love to. That. That'd be great. Let's do that. All right. All right. All right, this is where the magic happens. This is where it's made, although some people would say wine is made in the vineyard, and I definitely agree, but this is where it's physically made. Right. So where are all the buckets where you step on them? <laughs> Everybody asks about that Lucille Ball episode. Everybody remembers that Lucille Ball. We're a little more sophisticated, and uh, when you come back in the nicer part of the year, we'll do a tour of the crush pad outside, which I is where we actually do all the fruit processing. Yeah, we have two very big pieces of equipment out there. We have a distemmer machine, which we dump the grapes in a hopper in the top, and it takes the, separates the grapes that we want from the stems and stuff we don't want. Right. 
And then we have a big press out there. We have to press the juice or the red wine away from the skins at a very critical step in both processes. And we have that big thing out there that we use to do that. And then we pump the juice in here and it starts the fermentation inside the wine. It takes a lot of grapes to get that amount of juice that you need. To it in. does, yeah. This is a big thousand gallon tank here. Wow. That takes, I'm not even sure how many, how many grapes. It's about uh, 155 gallons from a ton of red grapes and about 140 to 145 gallons of white wine from a ton of white grapes. Now, I happen to see some bottles with some little medals wrapped around. You've won some competitions. We have, yeah. Our wines have won competitions in all around the United States. Uh, there's several very, very good competitions we've sent them to. And also locally, the, uh, the um, Derby Festival each year has a wine competition, as does the State Fair. And we've won awards at those as well. Right here in Justman County. You also have other places to where people can go to purchase your product and have tasting rooms as well. We do. We have our, our other tasting room is at Hamburg Pavilion in Lexington, out near I-75 at Man War. And that's a very nice, beautiful tasting room. It has a Venetian theme to it. Uh, it's very pretty. And then our wines are available in most of the regional liquor stores here as well. Now let's talk about everybody's seen on television the proper, you know, way to smell and taste wine. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm just going to be straight up front here. We cannot taste wine on television, yeah. but let's talk about the procedure itself. Okay. Well, we uh, can smell it. Okay, uh, I'll do that. <laughs> For sure. This is our Norton Reserve, and okay. this is the wine that I mentioned that so it, uh, is right. my favorite. Yeah. Now, I love all of our wines. Uh, they're, each has a niche and each has a following, and uh, if we discontinued any one of our wines, we'd be in trouble. So I know that there are people out there that really love that, but when I became a winemaker, you know, for other people, you, you don't just make wine you like, but this is the one I, I happen to enjoy the most, and um, really, really ripe grapes in this. So the first thing you do, of course, is you need to introduce the wine into the glass. So you just do a little pour. Half ounce to an ounce is good, just to kind of see what the wine is like. Um, one thing you want to do is kind of hold it up to a light source and kind of look at the wine, see how dense it is. Look at the rim of the wine, uh, right where it meets the glass. With a red wine, you want to see it just fading to a kind of light red color. If you see any brown in the tinge of the wine around the rim of the glass, it's an oxidized wine. It's gotten too much air or oxygen, and you'll, you'll smell that and taste that in the wine once you've kind of become accustomed to what that smells and tastes like. That's a, a ruined wine. But our Norton is very dark and inky purple, as you can kind of see in the glass there. The next thing you want to do is you want to, what I remember the first time I heard this, it sounded crazy, but volatilize your esters. And so esters are compounds that the grapes produce that are now translated into wine that um, get into the air and you can smell them. And so the way you do that is you just want to swirl it and coat the inside of the glass. And if you're nervous about doing that in the air, you can always set it on a, a, a flat, smooth surface and just draw small circles with your finger and your thumb to swirl it around. Once you do that, you stick your nose way down in there, take a big breath and enjoy what you smell, and then try to, the fun part is to try to think about, okay, what am I smelling there? And with Norton, uh, it's a very interesting grape. It's like nothing else. Um, for our fans out there that really know Norton, they know the flavors and aromas. I always tell people brown spices. So allspice, nutmeg, clove, cinnamon, a little bit of mushroom, a little bit of earth. And those are, I think, Norton's best characteristics when it's really done well. And then the other thing you'll smell in this wine particularly, because it spent a year in an oak barrel, is you'll smell some wood on it. Uh, we try not to over oak it. Um, if anyone is a bourbon aficionado, they know the smell and flavor of oak and right. a bourbon. That's really what gives it its color and flavor. And then the, re the next thing is that you taste it and, and you can swirl it and uh, draw air in over your mouth over it and then swallow and kind of think again about the flavors and aromas that you smell. And a lot of your taste is, is based on your nose. So if you've right. got a cold or a stuffed up nose, it's going to be hard to really truly taste the wine. But that's basically kind of tasting one on one. That's what you do. Now we cook. I, I, I befriended a French chef years ago and he taught me so much and he used wine in almost everything. So Denise, your wife, you're going to turn the, the chef duties over to her, correct? Absolutely. Right. Yeah, she's our chef and I wouldn't uh, tread on that. She doesn't come in the winery too much, so <laughs> I will not uh, tell her how to cook. She's a phenomenal chef. She, she really has made herself into a, a really talented chef and very proud of her. We're looking very forward to spending time here, watching the whole process and having some of that good. I heard of something about a Tuscan dinner. Yeah, so am I. Let's get it going. Good to meet you, sir. Good to meet you, too. Uh -huh. Now let's talk about our Facebook page. We have got over 6,000 people on board and we're rapidly gaining and we're enjoying talking to folks. And recently we started a contest. Now that being said, go take a look at our Facebook page, like it, and then tell us about your favorite restaurant. We're going to list all that we've got so far and that's a bunch of them. 
Now, one of our favorites in the world is the Bluebird. We went there recently. We want some place like that that has good Kentucky products featured there, locally grown stuff. Tell us the name of your restaurant that you like. We're gonna have a little contest. We'll pick the one that we like. We'll go to that restaurant, and if you're the one that told us about it, we'll have dinner with you, and we'll feature your restaurant on the show. Also, check out timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. Check out all our recipes that you might have missed. Check out shows that you might not have seen before. Now, here's our country kitchen calendar. Hey, you want to join us for the Farm Machinery Show. We're going to show up there, and we're going to talk about gardening season, which is right around the corner, recipes, all kinds of food stuff. That's February 15th at 10.30 in Louisville at the Farm Machinery Show. Hope to see you there. We've got a lot of new shows coming up for you, a lot of fun stuff. It's all about good times, good friends, and good eats right here in Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. See you next week with a brand new show. Special thanks to Chrisman Mill Vineyards, Good Foods Market and Cafe, Kentucky Beer Cheese, Whole Cat Custom Smokers, and Weisenberger Mill. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen brought to you by Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office. Try something different tonight. Salt Rocks, the flavor of life.